Now, if y'all follow us on Twitter, then y'all seen for the past couple of days, especially after EDC announced it and came out and said, oh, yeah, we'll, um, we're going to make a decision on Adolfo Away, his fifth year option. We'll make an announcement on that in the next couple of days. I've been pleading with the Ravens. I've been begging. I've been asking over and over. All right, go ahead and make that announcement. Go ahead. When are you going to give us the news? When are you going to give us the details, Mr. Eric DaCosta and Ravens? And we waited a little patiently, not too patiently. And then finally, finally today, it was announced that the Baltimore Ravens are picking up the fifth-year option of first-round draft pick Adafe away. And that is huge for the Baltimore Ravens because there were a lot of people that thought the Baltimore Ravens may not pick up his fifth-year option. And I can see why, because with Adafe away as a first-round pick, there's so much pressure that's on you as a first-round draft pick. There's just so much expectations that are on you. And with Adafe away, I, I think, honestly, if we look at him, and, and if he even looks at his own career thus far to this point, I, I, I can say that I would think, not in no disrespectful way, of course, but I would think that he would feel like, okay, I, I don't feel like I've lived up all the way to my potential yet. And we've seen the potential. We've seen the flashes. I remember last year, especially, there was he had missed some time with an injury. And then he came back, and he was just on this, like, mean streak where he was getting, like, a sack every game. He was getting to the quarterback all the time. And I was like, okay, hey, there we go. There it is. So we've seen it. We've seen it plenty of times. We've seen the highs with Adolph Fairway. We've seen the lows. I remember two years ago toward the end of the season where he wasn't even a starter anymore. So we, we've seen the mix of the good and the bad with Adolph Fairway, but with the Baltimore Ravens picking up that fifth-year option, this is letting us know, this is letting Adafe away know that they still believe in him. They still see something special in him, and they are going to give him an opportunity. Actually, two more opportunities because he's under contract for two more years now. But they're going to give him two more opportunities to prove himself. Team, keep it clean. We're about to get into this. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on, and leave a like on the video. Y'all been doing that a lot, so I appreciate it because it helps out the channel a ton. We're getting very close to 75,000 subscribers. We almost there. But anyway. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Adafe OA. Like, so, so any OA. Anyway. All right. Enough of it with the dad jokes. Um, Ravens got a little history <laughs> with the fifth year option. And I appreciated Jameson Hensley because he gave us a nice little reminder of their history with the fifth year option. And let's go over this list. It says um, with Jimmy Smith, they picked up the fifth year option with him. I didn't even know it was a thing back then. Uh, with Matt Elam. They didn't pick it up. And I know what Matt Elam is. Well, yeah, we know how that went. Uh, with C.J. Mosley, they did pick it up. And with C.J. Mosley, they tried, man. They, they tried to sign into a contract extension. But C.J. Mosley said, I ain't settling for that. I want more. Give me more. C.J. Mosley's about that money. I, I ain't mad at him. C.J. Mosley was cool, man. I like C.J. Mosley. But I feel like with him, he just, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, um, continuing. Uh, with Brashaw Perryman. My guy. Shout out to Brashaw Perryman. I wish it would have worked out with the Baltimore Ravens, and it didn't for a number of reasons. But anyway, they did not pick up his fifth-year option. With Ronnie Stanley, they did. And, I mean, you see, he's still around now. Ronnie Stanley been around for a little minute. Um, with Marlon Humphrey, they picked up his fifth-year option. Uh, with Hayden Hurst, he was, of course, traded. Uh, he got traded. Where did he get traded? Was he traded to the Panthers first, or was it somewhere else first? I I don't even remember. I think it was the Panthers, but I don't even remember. And with Lamar Jackson, yeah, they picked up that guy's fifth-year option. Don't really think that would be a question, but then, you know, they got into all the contract disputes. I mean, we know how that went, but we know how it ended up, which ended up in a beautiful relationship, and they got it done, which was so important. Anyway, continuing with Hollywood Brown. They said, Eric DeCosta said, I anticipate, we anticipate picking up Hollywood Brown's fifth-year option, but, of course, he ended up getting traded. Uh, with Patrick Queen, they did not. They declined uh, his fifth-year option. They did say, hey, we want to keep Patrick Queen. We want to talk contract with Patrick Queen, but it obviously didn't work out, so now he's the enemies with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, and now with Rashad Bateman, he didn't even have the option for a fifth year option and we still I know we got a lot of details on Bateman's contract but we still waiting on even more details we wait on Brian McFarlane to really really break it down only the way that he knows best so once we get that we'll share with y'all and we'll go over that but we'll talk about Bateman later and then of course with the the, the same year that Bateman was drafted Adolph Fairway was drafted as well and his is getting picked up but what does this mean financial wise for Adolph Fairway well his fifth year option will be worth 13 million, 13.25 mil uh, in 2025. So that's a nice, that ain't too much money now. 
That ain't no crazy amount of money, especially if Adafi Awe can do what we hope both him and Rashad Bateman do. And that's really just find their niche, really just find that find that stride in the NFL with the Baltimore Ravens. Because, again, with both of these guys, it's been a lot of the same thing. They'll have moments here and there. They'll have moments far and few. They'll have times when it's like, ah, yes, that's him. There we go. But then it'll be moments where you don't hear from them for a while. It gets a little quiet. And I know the NFL is hard. It's tough. It's a tough league. And sometimes what somebody does, it can be overlooked. Like with a wide receiver, you look at Rashad Bateman. And you think, oh, man, Rashad Bateman having a quiet game. But you may not realize, oh, he made a key block on that second and two that let the running back go for 17. Oh, on that screen, that wide receiver screen of Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, he knocked that corner out, out on the sidelines. So that corner wasn't even a factor trying to tackle Zay Flowers anymore. So they, they can be stuff with times where they do the dirty work and it goes unnoticed. Same thing with Adolfo Way. You can look at him and be like, oh, man, he ain't getting no sacks, man. What's going on? Where's the production? Adolfo Way, what's up, man? But then you look, oh, man, he said in the edge like that, there ain't no stat for that. That doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Oh, man, he made a nice tackle for loss on this running back. Oh, man, he blew up that running play like crazy. Oh, man, he got them two quarterback hits in that game. Oh, man, he's so close to getting a sack, but he ain't quite get there. Now, there are stats for QB hits. But, again, not everything that NFL players do goes noticed because a lot of what they do, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. So that's another reason why a lot of people can look at players as underwhelming when they don't get all the stats that you would hope that they do sometimes. But that, that doesn't mean that that player still isn't putting in work. So with Adolfo away, um, I guess, again, Ravens were like, look, our first round draft picks from that year, we ain't letting y'all get away so easy. Because with Rashad Bateman, again, signed him to an extension with Adolfo away to pick up the 50 option. And then with Adolfo away, they're like, look, man, all your friends and family is pretty much here, man. Like, you got David Ajabo, uh, y'all was in high school together. Um, they just drafted Isaac from Penn State, y'all played together. And then the safety that the Ravens drafted, what, in, in the sixth or seventh round? They got ties, too. Him and Adolfo Wade, they, they got ties, too. So Ravens were like, look, if all your people gonna be here, you might as well be here, too. Hey, hashtag hood hardball, you know he. He be putting his people on, but he'll put other people on too. And he keeping the people together. So shout out to the Baltimore Ravens for getting this done and making this official announcement, which we appreciate it. I, I, I do think it's a good move. I, I do really think it's a good move because, again, just like with Rashad, it's there. We see it. We see the flashes. Now it's just about more consistency. So Adafi away, he has a big opportunity, huge opportunity now. Because while, yeah, they picked up his fifth-year option, which is great, but now he's, he's eligible for a contract extension. So you don't got to wait for that fifth year to show out. Because you can, Adafi away can literally get paid any second now. He's eligible to get paid any second now. Now, they're not going to do it just yet, of course. He got to prove some more stuff to them, but he's eligible now. So, I expect a turn up from Adafi away. I really do. Because that, hey, that money, that money make you do some things, don't it? Don't it? Like, hey, what, you, you saw Matabike? You saw, and with Matabike, before we saw flashes, but with Matabike, it was more about lack of opportunity. That's probably, in my opinion, the biggest reason why Matabike didn't just go off before. But he got his opportunity last year in 2023, and boy, he took off. Boy, got that bread, man. So now with Adafi away, he's, he's been getting the opportunity. The opportunity's been there. Ain't no question or doubt about that. And he will probably continue to get it because I don't see anybody else starting over him. I expect it to be him out there a lot. Kyle Vinoy out there. I don't expect Kyle Vinoy to be out there. I'd say more than 50% of the snaps, but maybe like 60%, something like that. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be like no full-time player. Now, he definitely ain't going to be no part. Well, I guess it's technically part-time, but I don't think Kyle Vinoy going to be out there like that, like that. On passing downs, yeah. But, yeah, and Kyle Vinoy can do a little bit of everything. But, again, with him being a little bit older, I expect them to use the younger guys a lot more. Um, but we got Kyle Vinoy, got Adafi away, David Ajabo. We'll see once the Ravens start really reporting um, how healthy David Ajabo is. And hopefully he can stay and remain healthy because that will make the Baltimore Ravens and their pass rush just that much better. 
Then again, they, they drafted uh, Isaac from Penn State. Uh, so I expect him to be a contributor. Uh, you got Tavis Robinson too. Tavis Robinson. But my point is that with Adafi away, I expect him to get more playing times, more snaps than all of those guys. He's going to be out there a lot. So with Adafi away, he got all the reason in the world to be motivated. The Baltimore Ravens just gave him a big confidence boost like, hey, Adafi, we believe in you. Because, I mean, he could have. This could have been motivating for him either way. Because think about it. If they pick up the fifth-year option, which they did, they're like, hey, Adafi, we believe in you. Show us why this wasn't a mistake. All right, cool. If they didn't pick up the fifth-year option, all right, Adafi, this is your last year. Show us what you got. And Adafi away would not only be playing for the Baltimore Ravens, but he'd be playing for 31 other teams that could possibly pay him. So, hey, we'll see. Now, with them picking up the fifth year option, what does this mean for the future? We, we did brush touch on it a little bit. This does mean that a couple of different things could, get, could happen. Three different things could happen. One, the Baltimore Ravens, he, he stays with the Baltimore Ravens, and they end up signing him to a long-term contract extension uh, a year from now or even two years from now. And that would be a beautiful thing because that would mean a Dafe way he showed up and he showed out. That would be great. On the flip side, maybe it doesn't work out. And maybe Adafi away, he plays these last two years with the Baltimore Ravens, and then uh, it just doesn't work out. Then he goes somewhere else. And whether it works out there or not, to be determined. And whether that even happens or not, obviously, is to be determined. But that's another thing that could happen. Something else that could happen, a third thing, is that it doesn't work out this year, and then next year he ends up being traded. That's a real possibility as well. But... We don't want that to happen. We don't anticipate that happening because we know Adafi Away, he's going to live up to that potential. My guy Mike on Twitter, he asked me earlier today. He said, what, what do you really think about Adafi Away? Do you think he's a good player? Do you think is that, that, that he got good potential? And I said, yeah, I, I do feel like with Adafi Away, the potential is there. Uh, we obviously haven't seen the sacks. He's been good against the run, uh, but he's been close to the quarterback a lot of times. And I feel like another year with Chuck Smith, the pass rush specialist, the outside linebackers coach. Another year with Chuck Smith could do a Dafe away good. But guess what? Now we got him for another two years.